Some people say no relationship is a waste of time. You can learn what you want or what you don't want. So there's always something you're gaining from it. And to that, I say, you got me messed up. <laughs> I ain't feeling it. No way, no how. You are tripping as far as I'm concerned. Here is why. Listen, you better believe there is a such thing as wasted time. All right. And when we start to believe that there is no such thing as wasted time in relationships and dating, then we start to waste our time. We don't start to value it and claim it in a way that allows us to not be robbed of it by someone who doesn't deserve to be in our lives. And more specifically, you as the woman allowing some man to linger on longer than he should because it's only going to make matters worse. And, and listen, it's not that you can't gain something from every relationship failed or not good or bad, but there's a point that once you cross, you are now wasting time. So to put it in perspective, if for example, in, within, and I'm just giving a random example, if within the first two months, you learn that he's very disrespectful in how he talks to you, all right? And he's unwilling to change that disrespectful uh, way of talking to you. Well, you learned that in two months. If you now stay with him for two years, you didn't learn anything new after the two months. You didn't, you, th there's no benefit of the extra time you gave this man who was unwilling to change his ways. This is now wasted time. Now listen, I do not say this to make you feel bad. I don't want you, anyone to beat themselves up if they stayed longer or allowed a man to remain longer than he should. But I want you to acknowledge it for what it is so that you don't continue to make the same mistake. But also, this is why I want you to embrace giving him a deadline in dating. Because we have to be careful with how we allow situations to linger on and, and understand the ramifications of what happens when it does go longer than it should. So let me lay out the reasons why you need to give him a deadline in dating. The first one, and this might surprise you, but hear me out. The first reason why you need to give him a deadline in dating is because men struggle to let go. Here's what I'm, what I'm saying with this, all right? In, well, here's one thing, let me point out to you. I, I can't remember the exact number, but I believe that 70%, I think they say 70% of divorces now are initiated by women. I bring that point up because a lot, there are people out there, some men, who will use that stat to try to paint women in, the, in this horrible light. And I think you can't just take that number and, and come to a conclusion. You got to go deeper and understand what's going on. And one of the things that I have found is that the reason why the, the initiation rate is so high on the woman's side is because a lot of men... Even when the relationship is toxic, even if he's cheating on her, even if he's abusive, if it can be the most horrible relationship, they still won't let her go. They still won't walk away. And so the reason why I'm bringing this point up in regards to giving him a deadline in dating is because if you're waiting for the man to do what is right, you may be waiting forever. All right. And you've got to understand. And, and I gave a very more extreme or negative situation to, to paint the picture. But let's just say, for example, it's not toxic. It's a nice relationship, but it's not the right relationship. Well, do you think he's going to let go? If, if I can't tell you how many times I've seen couples where the man genuinely thinks there's nothing wrong here. But the woman knows or feels the void, feels like it's just not there. She's not truly in love. And so now, maybe she has made some attempts to walk away and he fights it and she feels guilty, so she continues on with him. Either way, whether it's good, whether it's bad, the point is men struggle to let go. And so now, you cannot wait for him to pull the trigger. You cannot wait for him to decide when this has gone on too far. Not to mention... Because men struggle to let go, or let's also add the fact that some men are just going to take advantage and use you, they don't see a reason to let go. They, they, they don't want to because in a lot of situations, not all, but there are many situations where even when she is unhappy, 
she is giving the man what he desires. So he does not see a need to walk away. And so again, in, in dating you, he will drag this out, whether it's in the form of boyfriend, girlfriend, whether that's marry, taking it as far as marrying you and, and you not declining because maybe you're happy just to get married, whatever it is. There's so many things we can talk about here, but the point is he may not ever do it. And so you have to take that responsibility of recognizing, okay, what's my cutoff point for when I realize this is either not the right relationship, and I would argue that, listen, for a lot of you ladies, you know it pretty fast when it's not the right relationship. Your intuition, it speaks to you. Maybe God is speaking to you, um, both. And something is telling you from the jump, but again, too many women try to rationalize past that. The sooner you embrace it, the better. But regardless, even if we leave for the sake of maybe some of you don't feel like you hear from your intuition, or don't hear God, okay, fine. You still need to identify where there's that breaking point before you actually break, all right? Um, that you're gonna say, okay, this has gone on long enough. Especially when it comes to just dating, when we're not even taking it to that next level of commitment. But I feel the need to say this right now. Him being willing to commit to you in a official relationship or if him even marrying you does not wash away all the wrongs in the relationship. It doesn't automatically make things better. So if the relationship is still toxic, if there's still all these problems, you can't say, well, now he's willing to commit so maybe things will get better. No, they should have got better before y'all entered into the official commitment. And if we cannot properly address and resolve them in advance of that, we should not continue. And if he's unwilling to do that work in advance, then he needs to go. So to get back to the point, and so we can move, on, move along on this list, and let me, let me add one more thing, because even with marriage, I have tons of stories. I won't go into them right now, but I have tons of stories of men who married the woman even though they were not in love with the woman, married out of obligation. Some married because the woman essentially proposed and he didn't know how to say no. Um, like I had one guy flat out tell me, I only got married because I, I was too afraid to say no. You know, um, and, she, and in that scenario, she didn't officially propose to him, but she kind of put it out there like, listen, we got to get married or this can't continue. And he didn't know how to, again, let go. So he moved it along, but he was unhappy and it was unfulfilling. And then eventually there was a divorce, you know, and to go back to that earlier point about 70 percent of women, what happens is though a lot of women struggle to let go as well, especially the longer things drag on, the more of an investment she's made. I would argue that there is a greater chance of her reaching a breaking point to where she simply can't take it anymore. Not that this doesn't happen with men, but I see it happen quicker with women. And quicker could be for her, it took her 10 years, and for him, it would have took him 20 years. It's still quicker, all right? But let's keep moving along on this list. All right, the second reason why you need to give him a deadline in dating is because the longer you wait, the more attached you get, all right? So I kind of alluded to it in the first point, but let's talk about it some more. The unfortunate reality for a lot of women is that it is very difficult to walk away from an emotional investment, from any investment into a man. And I've seen a lot of women struggle to let go because you is, they essentially want a return on that investment. They want to be validated in the efforts they made to make this work. They want to feel like, you know, what they hope this man would be is going to actually happen. And, and all their time and energy was not wasted. In, in hoping it was not wasted, I'm going to keep pushing this along, hoping I finally get validated in all that I've done here only to be more disappointed, only to see that that changes nothing, all right? Only to, to, to have it become harder to now let go because the investment gets deeper. Because it, in, in hoping that he will now give you the payoff you were looking for, you keep putting in. You keep, put, it's, it's almost like um, what I'm picturing right now is being, being a casino. And you're already a thousand dollars in on this, on this slot machine. And you're like, listen, I'm going to win something. <laughs> so I'm going to keep putting in coins. You're not just going to keep pressing the lever. You're going to keep putting in coins, hoping to finally hit the jackpot. 
And in most cases, you never hit the jackpot. And you end up just losing more. And so you've got to be honest with yourself about where is my cutoff point to when I get too invested to now I have a problem pulling back or getting out of here, all right? And, and not just in, in the sense of time, in the sense of actions as well. And, and understand that more time leads to chances of more action. So I'm going to give one example that I'm alluding to here. Sexual investment, all right? The longer you date this man, there's a greater chance of sex occurring. All right. I, I know some of you are officially waiting. That's great. But the reality is that for many, even when they start off as waiting, the more you engage with this individual, you have your intimate moments. One thing leads to another. Bada bing, bada boom. Right. <laughs> so um, and, and now that sexual investment creates another attachment. All right. And so you you got to recognize, OK, if X amount of time gets me in too deep, if sex gets me in too deep, if loaning him money gets me in too deep, these are cutoff points. We, we've got to say to ourselves, all right, before I do these things, before I give this much time, if I cannot come to a conclusion that this is the guy for me or this guy cannot show me what I need to see to be able to move forward and be able to commit so that we can move forward, then we have to let go. And, and for the record, letting go doesn't necessarily mean it can't happen later. I'm a huge believer in right person, wrong time. Let's just say you meet a man at a time where he's, so, he's starting a new business, he's super busy, he does not honestly have the amount of time you need to feel happy and secure in the relationship. He may give some level of time, but he's not giving you enough based on what you require, all right? And so letting go right now simply means recognizing, okay, he's not in a position to be able to build something special with me right now. doesn't mean he's a bad person. It just means we can't keep this going. But again, if you allow it to continue with this man and drag on, one, it could turn out that he just isn't the guy. It, it, he could become comfortable with giving you less of his time because you've accepted it to, for so long. There's so many things that can go left. And so again, it still boils down to there must be a cutoff point so that you don't get yourself too deep and get yourself into too much trouble. All right, so now we're at number three. And the third reason why you need to give him a deadline in dating is because more time can turn into more damage and more disappointment. Now, of course, it doesn't matter who you date, there can be some level of damage or disappointment that occurs. But what I'm getting at here is if, if you're in a situation where you're dating a man and he is not either not being the man that you need him to be or, uh, you know, the, the relationship is just not what, where, where it should be. He's unwilling to commit to you at the, you know, the way that you need, so on and so forth. Then allowing things to linger on with him will set you up for worse things to come. All right. And not just worse things to come, because there's one thing I want to highlight real quick is what I call dating fatigue. All right. And my, my perception or my argument is that a lot of people, men and women, but right now I'm talking to the ladies, a lot of you as women, because you get yourselves involved in situations that drag on longer than they should, that only lead to inevitable disappointment, it starts to wear you down to the point where you don't have the energy for the next person. You don't even have the energy to put yourself out there anymore. You struggle to have a positive mindset about men and dating because these individual damaging situations are just taking pieces of you, taking pieces of you, taking pieces of you, and you just don't have much left. And now there can be a scenario, and I've seen this happen plenty of times, where the woman actually meets a guy who could be that guy who's awesome, amazing, but she's so depleted, she can't properly show up in that situation. And now it, it ends up sabotaging what could have been something amazing. And that's why I'm so adamant about talking about and teaching about all these things to look out for. Because listen, when I, when I talk about when the man's doing this and that and all this stuff, right? It's not to demonize all men. It's not to bash men. 
it's, it's, it's not to make it seem like men are evil and women are perfect. No, no, no. It's to help you as a woman avoid the pitfalls and the damaging situations that end up robbing people of great relationships. It is for the purpose of helping you, the woman, and the men out there experience great things. It's to, it's to stop seeing people because they're so damaged, being unable to come together and experience what God has put forth and, and wanted to give them, wanted to bless you to with. So it's to help everybody. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you can't avoid the damage if you don't understand what's lying, what's waiting for you out there to try to destroy you. And I have to use the word destroy because that's what happens to so many women. That's what happens to so many people. And I'm, I'm tired of seeing it. I'm just going to be real. I don't want to see it no more. So that's why I talk about these things. But I digress. Let's get back to the point at hand. All right. The bottom line is all this damage that can occur by letting things linger on is something that you have to be mindful of. And so the quicker that we can eliminate and remove people who don't belong, the better that you can preserve yourself, the better that you can keep yourself at a high energy and a positive mindset so that you can receive what's best for you, so that you can come together with the right person, so that you can live a higher quality of life because life isn't just about you meeting a man and having a relationship. It's about everything, your career, your purpose, your kids, if you have kids, if you want to have kids, your family, whatever. I want you to, to experience great things on all levels and these damaging, lingering situations hinder that. So be mindful of that. But let's, again, let's keep this going. All right. So now we're on to number four. And the fourth uh, reason why I need to give them a deadline in dating is because when you don't have one, you can give them a false sense of security. And so what I mean by giving my false sense of security is that there's a lot of situations, a lot of relationships, situations, whatever you want to call it, where the man doesn't, doesn't see or feel the need to step up and be better because he starts to believe you ain't going nowhere. He starts to believe that regardless of what he does, you're going to stick around. And this becomes especially true when He's already messed up many times or he's done inappropriate things and you keep taking him back. He has no reason to think that now you're going to just up and one day walk away, which is why you'll see these situations where the woman finally gets fed up, finally says enough is enough, and the dude is shocked. He's like, I can't believe it, to the point where he's mad at her. And you would think as a woman, you're like, how did you? How could you not expect for me to at some point get sick and tired of this and leave you? But but to him it was like you ain't leave all those other times. You you kept letting things slide and not because don't misconstrue this with giving the right guy an opportunity to fix things. Because in relationships we're gonna have mistakes. We're gonna have moments where people fall short, and it doesn't mean let them go right away. Sometimes it's a fixable situation. But I'm, I'm talking more about the person who is consistently bad, blatantly bad, you know, and not showing real effort to fix things. The most he may give you is a, I'm sorry, but his actions are no different. His understanding of the problem has not evolved and improved in any kind of way. And this guy, you keep letting him back in or you let him back in without any real consequences to what he did before. All right. And so all that to say, you, when you give that false sense of security by letting things linger on longer than they should, he becomes very comfortable. And again, it undermines the, the a chance for him to understand he needs to be better. Listen, let me make this very clear before I move on to the next point. Everything has consequences. You don't pay your mortgage, you lose your house. You don't show up to work on time, you lose your job. Even God has guidelines if we want to reach the next level with him. Every, and if we don't, there's a consequence. Everything has consequences. Yet you have people out there who want to make it seem like it's wrong to have consequences in a relationship. No, it's wrong not to have them. People have to understand. It's not that I want you to hold over someone's head that I will leave you at any moment, right? Or anything like that. But they need to understand that they're not going to do their part you have no problem walking away. 
If they're not going to get on the same, or if they're not on the same page as you, if they're not able to embrace what is necessary to make this a successful, happy relationship, you are prepared to walk away. So as long as they're doing what they got to do, we good. But if not, they need to understand that consequence is waiting right around the corner for them. All right, so before I get to the next point, real quick, if you want to receive the best piece of relationship advice I ever heard for free, click the link below in the comments section or in the comments and you'll get it right away. You're going to love it. So again, it's free. Just click the link and sign up and you'll get that information. So the, the next reason I actually kind of already spoke about it. So we're going to make this one quick is he won't see a need to do better. So I kind of merged it with the whole false sense of security. And so just to quickly reiterate the point, yes, again, if, if there is no deadline, he has no reason. He, it, it's very easy for that man to get comfortable and not see a reason to step up. All right. And so it's, it's not, let me say this. It's not that you have to say, listen, you got till September <laughs> or we're done. But depending on the scenario, it might be that, all right? I, I want you to understand that initially, the deadline can simply be what, what you have for yourself. Like you, you have it in your mind, listen, once, I cro once we cross these barriers, once we cross these lines, and, and, and let me also say this, not to jump around too much, but though I'm speaking a lot in the frame of time, I do think we have to be more fluid and look at it more so from certain markers, certain actions, experiences that occur in a relationship. Meaning, all right, if, if we've, let's say we have sat down, had tons of conversations, asked all the important questions, we've done all the deep diving into each other. But we accomplished this in two months, all right? Because we really went intentional and hard with it. Well, then after that, if we at that point cannot see that we truly want to move forward together or something's missing or whatever, then that's the deadline. Like it, you didn't have to say in advance it's two months because you didn't know you're going to knock all that out in two months. Now for someone else, it might take them three months to accomplish that. Their deadline will be three months. So what I'm getting at here is it's not simply about the time marker. It's also about what we've done, what we've discussed, what I've already seen and again, sometimes if your intuition kicks in in a couple weeks, all right, well, then that's the deadline. I mean, so it's a very fluid thing. But yes, there are going to be some scenarios where it will be very time related. And it may be a situation where I'm going to use one example. Let's say you are with a man and you guys are contemplating if you want to get married with each other. And he says, well, listen, how about we live together first? Because we want to make sure, you know, how we feel about this and if we can coexist under the same roof. And I'm not going to get into whether right or wrong or if you should live together. Let's just focus on that's what you decided to do. Well, then there still needs to be a deadline with that. Like, okay, we're going to live together and maybe we'll give it a year because typically it's a year lease. And if after a year, we can't say with confidence that we want to move forward into marriage, we're done. And, and that deadline actually doesn't need to be at the year that the lease ends. It needs to be a couple months or a few months before the lease ends so that we don't find ourselves in this situation where, well, we don't know where else we're going to live. Now we're kind of feeling stuck. Hate using the word. We're feeling kind of stuck in this situation because now it's too, it, it's too moving too fast to be able to find alternatives. So we want to plan ahead and say, okay, after eight months or nine months, whatever you decide of living together, into the whole year lease. If we cannot say with confidence, we are ready to move on to the next level, then we have to now plan to go our separate ways. So that's an example of how it can be a hard time set deadline in a situation. But back to the point, yes, with no deadline, it can undermine his understanding of how he needs to do better in this relationship. All right, so now that brings me to number six. And six is with more time, there can become more deeper attachments. So I mentioned attachments earlier, but when I, I made this point specific so we can talk about things like unwanted pregnancies or let's talk about planned pregnancies. And what I mean by planned pregnancies, I meant one person planned it, the other person did it. All right. So there's a lot of situations 
Society talks a lot about women planning the pregnancy when the man did it, right? And trapping the man. And that, that does happen, okay? And as a woman, I'm not here to judge right now. I'm here to simply say, if you've ever thought that having a baby with him is going to save that relationship or push things further, get that thought out your head. It doesn't work that way. Baby is not going to save the relationship. It's not going to make him to the man that you want him to make him, make him into. Never use getting pregnant as a method of trying to keep the relationship going, okay? But also be aware that the man, there are men who do the same thing. There are men who will impregnate you. There are men who will impregnate you hoping to lock you in and yes, hoping that they can move the relationship along, maybe marry you, whatever, but they're using the baby as insurance to keep you there. And then there are men who will impregnate you with no plan to, to be seriously with you, with no plan to commit to you, simply to have access in your life always. Because let's face it, a baby is a deeper commitment than marriage right now. Because though we can say, well, you're not supposed to get divorced, people get divorced. They can get divorced. So if two years into the marriage, you're like, I am sick of this person. I made a huge mistake. You can correct that mistake. But if you have a baby with them, it's a wrap. You got them for the rest of your life pretty much. All right. So with that said, you've got to understand that as time goes on and letting things linger on, Things like that can creep in. But in addition to babies, let's also talk about the deeper attachment of finances. So I kind of gave one small example of moving in together. And so there's a lot of people that because of the moving in together, they get caught up to where now financially detaching from this person becomes problematic. All right. Maybe it's because you feel like you're not going to be able to survive without their assistance or you may feel like you, you don't want to. If you leave him, he's going to be out in the cold and have nowhere to go. Boo-hoo for him. No, I'm sorry. But you listen, it's not your responsibility, okay? That's not your problem. He has to learn how to take care of himself. But the point is, a lot of women through guilt end up getting, struggling to let go, because I don't want to use the word stuck, struggling to let go in that situation. Um, and again, it creates this deeper attachment. Sometimes the loaning of money can create a deeper attachment, because I've seen women who they're afraid to break up because it's like, well, if I break up with him, I ain't never going to see that money, all right? And so that fear keeps them there. There's various things, credit, co-signing on stuff, all types of stuff. All that to say, the longer the situation lingers on, the greater the chance of deeper attachments forming that, again, will only make matters worse. Now, yes, are there ways to avoid those deeper attachments, even if you want to give the situation more time? Absolutely. But you have to be honest with yourself and you have to be aware of these things. And that's why I would say, listen, if you are going to try to give it more time, all right, then don't get caught up financially. Be mindful of what's happening in that bedroom, all these different scenarios, and be mindful of any other Things that can cause you to struggle to walk away. What's hitting my spirit right now that I have to mention, one of those deeper attachments is kids. Not having kids, but let's say you already have kids and they get very good with your kids. I've seen a lot of women struggle to let go of men because the kids love them. All right? And sometimes, and yes, sometimes it's a, it's a genuine thing that happens. Sometimes the man is actually using your kids to make it harder for you to let him go. And so there's another reason why I'm a huge believer that you don't introduce the kids until you've had enough time to evaluate that you both want to move forward together into a relationship. That has to be decided first. And then if you want to say, okay, well now the kids is that, that final test before we can actually finally make it official, cool. But you need to come to that determination first because if not, again, you can find yourself struggling to break up this, what feels like a family now, even though you now know he's not best for you. And the kids may not be at a level that they can understand he's not best for you, so they're not gonna make it any easier. So definitely pay attention to that. All right, and now the seventh reason why you need to give them a deadline in dating 
is because when you don't let go of the wrong people, you end up blocking your blessings. All right. Now, I know there's some people that say, well, you can't block what God has for you. Oh, yeah, you sure can. <laughs> you, you sure can. There's tons of examples uh, biblically and in various scriptural stories and spiritual stories from all kinds of beliefs that, yes, we, we have free will. We make decisions in life. And if we continuously make the wrong decision, we can block our blessings. And when we hold on to individuals, and more specifically, when you as a woman, and of course, this can happen to men too, but when you as a woman hold on to the wrong man, you are now unavailable to receive the right one. And I've literally seen this play out in so many ways. But for example, I've seen women where they're in a relationship with a man. Let's just say in this example, it's a toxic relationship. So it's clearly she does not belong there. But for various reasons, attachments have been formed, maybe emotionally, maybe financially, whatever the case may be. Great man comes along and one, because of the damage that has occurred in that current relationship that she's been dealing with, she emotionally cannot handle this great man that has come along. She can't even trust it's really, if it's really a good man or even the right man. It, it, it becomes too scary. It makes her feel too vulnerable. There's so much that goes wrong because as I said earlier, those lingering relationships create damage that make it harder to have the right relationship. But then also, because she's, she's in a relationship and you may be the type of woman that even though you're meeting this amazing man, you're not just going to leave the current man for this guy. You don't know what to do. So then you end up passing up on the opportunity. Another example could be the, the right man is right around the corner. He may know you. But he sees you in this relationship and, and he's not going to take action and approach you because he's like, well, she's in this relationship. I'm not going to disrespect what she's doing right now. I'm not going to try to come in between these two people. He may not even know the whole scenario. He may think, this is just coming to me right now. He may be looking at your Instagram and you post like everything's all good because a lot of people do that. They're in horrible relationships and they're posting like it's a great relationship. So he's falling for the, 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 the pictures online. And to him, it's like, all right, well, I don't have a shot here. Yet, if you detach from what wasn't for you, it would open the door to him being able to walk into your life. So you want to be mindful. And, and it's not even just, again, it's, this is also hitting my spirit. It's not just about blocking your blessings with a man. It's blocking your blessings in life in general. I say there's a, I, I've, I've tweeted this quote or posted this quote many times where I say, you know, there's a lot of women right now not walking in their purpose because they're walking with the wrong man and he's holding them back. And so dealing with the wrong man is holding you back in your career, in your health. I stress health because there's a lot of women who develop all kinds of cancer and issues and ailments due to the emotional stress dealing with a toxic relationship or a, a man they should not be dealing with. Being derailed in, 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 in so many things that they should be accomplishing having their family relationships destroyed or damaged, friendships hindered because of this man. This man who, again, does not belong there. So you have to understand that letting it linger on is not just about wasting time, but it's about robbing you of the blessings you deserve and should have in your life. And when you understand that better is waiting for you and that you don't need to hold on to what isn't for you, then you can set yourself up for amazing, amazing things. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. So I think one of the things that we can all agree on is that communication is extremely important to the health and success of a relationship. And it's not just being able to speak to someone, but being able to listen as well.